Discussing the issues of the day, discerning the times in which we live from a biblical perspective and worldview. Good afternoon, everybody. Andy White here. What you are about to hear is the fusion of heart, mind, and soul. And I want to welcome all my supporters and all my listeners and all my friends from all around the spherical globe and all across the fruited plain. Thanks for tuning in for this week's edition of Open Up the Doors. Hey, do me a favor. Let me know if you are listening. And please go on over to the Open Up the Doors Facebook page page and let me know where you are watching from i am streaming live over on my open up the doors facebook page over at facebook.com slash faith fm 91.7 if you've never liked the page please like the page and join the open up the doors family uh we are streaming live across the internet here at hamptonschristian.com of course but the best way to listen to Faith FM, if you are outside of the FM broadcast area, is to download the free Faith FM app. We have the app for the Android platform as well as the Apple platform, and you can get that at their respective uh, app stores, Google Play and, of course, the App Store for Apple. I also, and I would love for you to join me over there on Parler, folks. I have an, I have an account on Parler. Follow me on Parler at AJ White. 777 come on over and enjoy the freedom as twitter and facebook and all these other tech giants uh go down the rabbit hole of fascism faster than a speeding bullet but there is no censorship over at parlor so i would just love if you would join me over there again at aj white 777 you could follow me on over there. If you'd like to email me, you can email me as well at ajwhite777 at iCloud.com. Email me at ajwhite777 at iCloud.com. I think that takes care of all my preliminaries, I do believe. Um, as always, I've got so much I want to talk to you about today, but as most of you probably know, um, I guess most of you know who listen to the, to the broadcast regularly, I was involved with... Uh, a, a, a Patriot rally up in Albany, the Save New York rally that we had this past weekend. And I want to just share some thoughts and some reflections upon the weekend and let um, my sharing with you today really kind of revolve around that. The Albany rally was really success, successful. Excuse me. It was really, really good. I, I was so thrilled to be a part of it. I really was. There were so many great speakers that we had there. Uh, Sheriff Mike Carpinelli, who was running for, for governor against Andrew Cuomo in two years, spoke, and he was on the broadcast last week, so it was really great to uh, meet him in person since I had only spoken to him over, over uh, the phone and on the radio broadcast. Wonderful guy, great guy, and I'm hoping that we're going to be hearing a lot more from him in the coming uh, months as his personal campaign for governor begins to take off really after the th the beginning of the new year. But there were so many great speakers. I think one of my favorite speakers there was this uh, guy named Jonathan Gilliam. Jonathan Gilliam had a great, great message, a great word that he shared. Jonathan is a former Navy SEAL. Uh, he's got a radio show. Uh, he's got some books out, but he had a powerful word. 
Um, which reminds me, if you'd like to hear or catch any of what happened this past weekend and you couldn't go, the the live stream videos of the rally are, I have them up on my Open Up the Doors page. If you go on over to my page and scroll down, you'll see the videos and the pictures from the rally. Uh, uh, the, the live streaming from the rally is in two parts. And they're, they're labeled part one, part two. Um, I think Jonathan, I'm not, I remember what part he would be in in the video, part one or part two. Scroll through it. Jonathan was great. I shared the gospel. It was really just a wonderful time. So many, so many good, good um, speakers. And it was just an all around successful event. And I want to say it was a successful event. I really believe this because of prayer, because of praise, because of worship, because I believe that we had a protective covering all around us. And I want to thank you for your prayers. I know that many were praying because I was getting your emails. I was getting your texts. I was seeing people who were commenting on the live streams. And, and I really want to really uh, thank you all who, who maybe you couldn't be there physically, but you were, you were there in spirit. You were there in prayer. And that prayer covering, I believe, absolutely, absolutely without a doubt, was essential and 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 effective and i'll tell you i'll share some things in a moment as to why i'm saying that but one very special blessing and encouragement came to me from someone that i hadn't heard from in a very long time so it's a it's an old facebook friend but we've been out of touch you know people come into your life in and out in seasons it seems like and i had not heard from this person from for a very long time it's not a personal friend it's it's a facebook friend but it's someone that i had been in contact regularly with years ago um they live they live way down south they live like you know i'm up here in new york and they live down south and we've just not been in touch but i'm saying all that to say this because on i think it was monday or tuesday i don't remember what day it was but this person sent me a text saying that god had woken them up several times not just once this person said god had woken them up several times in the middle of the night over the course of a couple of nights and had laid uh my wife and i on their heart and felt to pray for us they didn't know what was going on they didn't know why uh like i said we haven't been in touch and they just god just woke them up to pray for me and my wife well those were the days that we were upstate in Albany. Those were the days that we were up and, you know, engaged and in, in, involved with this Save New York rally. And I don't even know. This is where the blessing comes in. I don't even know if this person even knew about the rally that we were involved in. They said they didn't know why they were praying other than the fact that God had laid me and my wife on their hearts. And like I said, they live on the other side of the country. And I was just sincerely astonished and blessed to really say the least that uh, faithful, faithful brothers and sisters of the Lord, even when you're when you've been out of touch for a while, God lays somebody on your heart to pray for them. Prayer, praise and the power of the Holy Spirit. I really believe saturated and soaked this the Save New York rally. The, on, the, the rally was on Saturday, but Friday night we had a night of, of prayer and praise and worship, a night of preparation. You know, the Bible says, for the angel of the Lord encamps about those who fear him. We have divine protection, brothers and sisters. We have divine protection. We have a, a prayer covering. The psalmist said that, that he shall... Uh, he shall surround us with songs of deliverance. You know, we, we, we read in the Bible, we read in the Bible how, how worship, we read how, how Saul, King Saul was tormented by an evil spirit. King Saul was tormented by a devil. And when he would come under this, this place of insane insanity, when he would find himself in a place of being tormented, we read in the Bible that Saul would call upon David to come and play his lyre and to sing psalms 
over King Saul. And the Bible tells us that when David picked up his harp, when David picked up his lyre, when David picked up his, in, in that day what would be considered a guitar, the evil spirit would flee as David began to play that worship music, the song of heaven, the songs of deliverance. You know, even the world recognizes that there's power in music. There's a saying in the world that says that, that music can even calm the savage beast. I'm, I'm saying all this for a reason. If secular music can calm the savage beast, do you know what anointed music can do? He shall surround me with songs of deliverance because greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. You see, we had we had a few counter-protesters that showed up. Not many, but enough. This, the, the, the Antifa BLM contingency of people showed up to counter-protest and they were making some noise for the most part for the most part, they kind of just hung around with their signs. They just kind of hung around so they could be noticed. And they were, for the most part, they were kind of just really buzzing around like a bunch of annoying little gnats. That was perfectly fine. We were there having a peaceful demonstration protest rally, and they have the same right to do that. We support their right to peaceful protest as long as it remains peaceful. But for the most part, we mostly ignored them. But there were a few, there were a few agitators amongst them who were trying to stir up the pots of, of contention, contention and conflict. But when they started getting a little loud at one point, uh, Pastor Joni Mitch, uh, uh, Joni Mitchell, jeez, <laughs> I got music on my head. Pastor Joni Lupus, sorry, Joni. <laughs> Not Joni Mitchell, Pastor Joni Lupus said let's worship god and she brought the she brought she brought the worship leader back up and we started worshiping and i was up by the by the platform at this moment and my wife was was uh, manning the, the the facebook live camera and i kept an eye on the on the blm crowd cuz they were starting to get a, they were starting to get a little bit uh, too rambunctious and loud like i said there was a couple of agitators looking for a problem so i had my, i really had my eyes peeled on my wife I had one eye on my wife at the camera and one eye on the crowd there because they were very close to her. And um, I can guarantee you, had anybody come near my wife, they would have seen the wrath of God fall from heaven very quickly uh, through me as a vessel. But I'll leave that aside. But but I'm saying this for a reason. I say everything for a reason, folks. you got to understand that. When the music started to play, when we started to worship, See, they were getting loud, but then when we started worshiping, and the music was louder than them, of course, my wife said to me later that day, she goes, the minute the worship started and we started worshiping God, they completely, the BLM people that were there, the Antifa people that were there, they completely settled down and quieted down. Praise, the power of praise, the power of worship. You know, the Bible says a soft answer turns away wrath but a harsh word stirs up anger and we shouldn't be fighting like the world we shouldn't be in conflict like the world we really shouldn't there are times when the world will force our hands unfortunately because if you go but here's the thing here's the thing i want to convey and really today i'm going to just share my heart about a lot of things that i've, I've been observing but if you go and confront the enemy on the enemy's terms, you need to be aware the confrontation will inevitably, inevitably bring conflict. And that is what the enemy is really looking for, especially in the case of BLM and Antifa. There was, like I said, there were a couple of agitators. They were looking for conflict. For the most part, we were ignoring them. But every once in a while, there were a couple people that tried to engage them in conversation or just or just get it back in their face. And that that just wasn't going to work. You cannot reason with unreasonable people. You really can't. But a few a few times they, the, the people were trying to to engage with them. And you need to understand when you engage the enemy on the enemy enemy's terms, that is what that is is what they're hoping for. The enemy is hoping that you'll respond to their provocations. And I'm not saying that sometimes direct confrontation should not be engaged in. Sometimes it certainly must be. 
but you just need to be ready and prepared for the conflict that will most likely come in a direct confrontation because they are looking to do us harm. They certainly are. But I am really, I'm saying all that to say this, I really am so very glad and thankful that we had a peaceful protest because it's quite sobering to realize that at the very same time we were having our rally in Albany, New York, that was a success, that was peaceful. There was a very similar rally going on in Denver the same day, possibly the same hours, I'm not sure. But, but Saturday the 10th, there was a Patriot rally in Denver that turned tragic, unfortunately. You probably heard about it. But uh, an Antifa member, or at the very least, a far uh, there's some there there is some. Well, the media was trying to say he wasn't he wasn't um, part of Antifa, but that that's really questionable because the shooter who who shot a Trump supporter and killed him at the Denver rally had a uh, tattoo has a tattoo on his arm that's that's, a, that's related to Antifa. But at the very least, when you go to this guy's uh, website, you see how far left he has been. He's been involved in, in, in leftist movements, the Occupy movement. But that rally in Denver turned tragic. According to a witness at the the event in Denver, a, a witness who was very close by, and all of this is on video, there, there was actually some very, very clear HD, phone HD footage, iPhone footage in HD about the whole the whole confrontation. It's it's disturbing when you watch it. But according to the eyewitness, the two men were arguing and pushing. The story goes that that um, the uh, the Antifa guy, by the way, this is very important. The Antifa guy was actually hired by the NBC news affiliate there in Denver. Oh, they're my friends. They are going to get sued into oblivion. They hired this Antifa leftist guy as a security guard for their camera crew. The guy wasn't licensed. The Antifa guy did not have a license to be hired as a security guard in Denver. So that was so NBC was breaking the law that way. Whether they knew he was licensed or not, I don't know. But either way, they broke the law. This guy was unlicensed to be a security guard. But from what I've read, and I don't mean to be all over the place with this, but it just popped into my head, and I want to give you the full context of the story. From what I read, this NBC affiliate in Denver has been very, um, um, what's the word I'm looking for, friendly uh, towards the BLM Antifa movement. They are very, they're, they're very uh, supportive of the BLM Antifa movement. So whether they knew this guy was the, the security guard that they supposedly hired was, was Antifa or not is almost irrelevant because they certainly were on the side as a news media uh, on the side of the, of the leftists and not on the side of the, the, the pro-Trump patriots. That goes without saying. However, now there's some real, uh, there's going to be some real lawsuits, I believe, coming down the pike. But let me get back to what happened here. Because I was, I was, I was meditating on this. I was thinking on this the whole time. This, this so could have easily have happened in Albany. But I believe because our, our, our event was bathed and soaked in prayer, and we went up there with the intention of of of, of bringing forth the word of God. It 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 was a powerful, powerful testimony. We we have two similar rallies here with two different end results. One ending in success and one ending in tragedy. Because an innocent patriot, Trump supporter, was shot in the head by this Antifa miscreant. The eyewitness said they, that they saw the two men the two men arguing. And one person was telling the other, and, and when I read this, I know what person it was. It was the Antifa guy. Go ahead, mace me, bro, mace me. You see, the Antifa antagonizer was provoking that's why i said what i said a moment ago these people want you to respond to their provocations and the antifa guy was in the face of the of the trump supporter saying go ahead mace me bro mace me what are you going to do why don't you mace me and there was some pushing and the video shows that uh when the when when, when the trump supporter guy uh, got pushed he did he maced the antifa guy the moment he maced him the antifa guy shot him in the head 
I believe the guy was 49 years old, a, a, a former Navy. It's a tragedy. It's an absolute tragedy. And call it what it is, and I got to go to a break in a minute, but I'm trying to, to, to show you some juxtaposition here with where I'm going in a few minutes in, 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 as this broadcast progresses. Because call it what it is, Denver 9, KUSA, an, an affiliate of NBC News, they hired, wittingly or not, they hired an, an assassin to shoot an unarmed veteran point blank in the head, period. It's heartbreaking, it's disturbing, but I need to tell you this, folks. We are already in a war. We've been talking about a civil war breaking out in America for many years now. I want to tell you something. We are already in a war. The only question remaining is will it go kinetic and how hot will it get? And please let me be perfectly clear. I am in no way advocating for that. I am in no way advocating for violence, not whatsoever. I'm not hoping for it. I'm not advocating for it. But I am simply telling you, I am simply analyzing and diagnosing realistically the situation that we find ourselves in. And I'll have a lot more to say when I come back. Stick, stick around, folks. I'm going to take a little short break here. Here's Rich Mullins' hope to carry on. Stick around. I'll be right back. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Rich Mullins hope to carry on. And I hope you're going to carry on, brothers and sisters. We got to stay steadfast right to the end. Welcome back. Andy White here. You are listening to Open Up the Doors here on Faith FM, WEGB 90.7 and 93.3 in Epic, WEGQ 91.7 in Quag. And I am here, yes I am, penetrating the unseen powers of darkness by simply speaking the light of truth, sending powers and principalities into frothy fits of frenzy. And I'm loving every minute of it. All right, I want to get back to sharing some of the things I was sharing about the rally again because uh, there is a stream of consciousness here folks that i want to get to after the rally on saturday when i was when i was packing up and i was i was heading back to the uh to the hotel with my wife this man i didn't know came up to me and like i said i i didn't know him but i remember seeing him the night before at the church where the praise and prayer rally was going on so obviously i I figured i just figured he he was a local who attended the church there in albany we had a great praise and 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 a praise worship service friday night at victory victory church there in albany i assume he went there i didn't like i said i don't i didn't know the guy but the point is he came up to me after the just caught me as i was leaving the the rally site at the end of the day and he grabbed me by my arm very firmly and he looked at me very very seriously straight in the face straight in the eyes and he said bro we are in a fight unto the death. And I said, hmm, I know. <laughs> he said, no. You need to understand. And he was very serious. He was very somber. He's staring at me. You need to understand. This is a fight unto the shedding of your blood. And I looked at him very seriously. And I said, no worries, brother. No worries. They will never shut me up i understand the warfare that we're engaged in he, he, the guy just gave me a hug and he walked away. i don't even know the guy's name like i said i didn't even know him. but he was straight up right we're in a fight unto the shedding of blood we know that according to the scriptures that Satan in the last days is going to pour out his wrath upon both the Jews and the church in the last days in an unprecedented way. And we have been already seeing this the last few years. 
it was a year ago that anti-Semitism was was uh, was rising in New York City. It was it was going off the rails. I remember doing a show almost a year ago, back in December, called this. The broadcast back then was called uh, Satanic Hatred. And then COVID hit, and a lot of things because New York shut down so much, a lot of things simmered down somewhat. But we're seeing that spirit because in, 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 in days past and weeks past, in fact, just the other day, Governor Andrew Cuomo said he was going to shut down the synagogues again uh, because, uh, according to him, there, there, there's, there are spikes in the coronavirus. They tried to shut down last week, two weeks ago now. There, there, there was, the, it, there was the, 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 uh, the Jewish feast, the Jewish festival of Sukkot, which is a seven-day festival. Normally, in years past, the city would block off the streets because the Jews live in Oh, practicing Jews, the Orthodox Jews, especially in Crown Heights, they, 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 they do what the Bible tells them to do. They build these sukkahs, these, these tabernacles, and they live, out, they live out in these tabernacles. It's a biblical feast. And, and for years, the, the city has supported them and helped them. Not this year. They tried to shut them down. And when they tried to shut them down, the Orthodox community, uh, they had a protest. And they started protesting. And then uh, Governor Cuomo got very angry and said if the Jewish community did not comply, uh, he would shut down the synagogues. I mean, that's insane. He's already he's already said that about the churches. They're trying to they're trying to shut down the synagogues. They're trying down trying to shut down the churches. Him and De Blasio, and uh, I have an audio clip. I'm not going to play it. I was debating whether to play it or not, and I have other things I want to get to. But my point is this: we're seeing what the Bible said would happen in Revelation 12. Revelation 12 says, "Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and sea, for the devil has come down to you having great wrath, because he knows that he has a short." time we're in a warfare it's manifesting itself in the natural realm but it's a spiritual warfare that's going on in the heavenly realm and the bible says now when the dragon saw that he had been cast to the earth he persecuted the woman who gave birth to the male child this israel satan is persecuting the male child when you read the context you understand the male child was the birth of Christ, was the birth of Jesus. The Bible tells us, and the dragon was enraged with the woman. He's persecuting the woman who gave birth to the child. That's that's Israel, those are the Jews. And he went to make war with the rest of our offspring. Who Who was the offspring of Israel? Who was the offspring of the Jewish nation, of the Jewish promises? Well, the Bible tells us he went off to make war with the rest of our offspring, who keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. The last day's warfare with the wrath of Satan. There's a time coming when the wrath of God is coming. That's different. I don't want to get into a whole eschatological thing right now. But I'm talking about the spirit of the age, the the zeitgeist, that's the spirit of the Antichrist that we're dealing with. But here's where I want to go with this. The same chapter in Revelation, chapter 12, tells us that those who overcome, remember Satan is waging war, and the Bible says, but they overcame him. How? How do we overcome? How are we overcomers in this warfare? How are we overcomers against the the, the wiles of the enemy? How do we overcome the schemes of the devil? It says it right here in Revelation, chapter 12. By the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony, not loving their lives, even to death. Up in Albany this past weekend, it was an honor and a privilege for me, even though I only had a few minutes, to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I preached the gospel up in Albany. In fact, you can watch the clip. I have it on my Open Up the Doors uh, Facebook page if you'd like to see that clip. Because if anything is going to save New York, it's when we call upon the name of the Lord, as I shared. Who, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Shall be saved. We need to be saved first. But I digress a little bit. We overcome the works of the enemy by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony, not loving our lives to the death they did not love their lives to the death 
But today's American Christians are loving their lives, thinking they're going to escape death. Let me say that again. They overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, not loving their lives to the death. But sadly, too many of today's American Christians are loving their lives, thinking they're going to escape death. Now listen, folks. I don't want to die a bloody death. I don't think any sane person wants to die a bloody death. But folks, the days are quickly coming upon us where there's going to be bloodshed. We're already seeing it happen. Christians are going to be persecuted and slain. It's already happening all over the all over the planet. But for those of you who think, and I'm going to say some things here that I think might step on some toes, but I'm deadly serious and I want you to listen. For those of you who think you're going to be raptured out of here before America sees trouble and bloodshed and calamity, I'm sorry to tell you You're deceiving yourselves. And my advice to you is to wake up and get ready and be prepared to die for your faith. Because if you're not ready and prepared to die for your faith, what makes you think you're ready and prepared to be raptured because of your faith? Let me be clear here. I believe in the biblical teaching of the rapture and the gathering together of the saints to meet the Lord in the, in the air. What I don't believe in is the Americanized version of it. While the church around the world is being persecuted, while Christians around the world are being run out of their homes and out of their towns, while persecution against Christians around the world has seen believers literally being beheaded, The idea in the American church that we are somehow going to escape all of that because, you know, America. I don't mean to offend anybody, but I'm deadly serious. Because when I hear these comments, when I see these statements in social media that people aren't worried about anything coming to America because, you know, we're getting raptured out of here. It sickens me. I'm just going to say it straight up. It sickens me because it truly concerns me when I hear American Christians say that they're not going to see any pain or persecution or suffering because, you know, this is the American church and, you know, the rapture is coming. It concerns me, brothers and sisters. It really does. It concerns me greatly that somehow many think that we've got some kind of a favored nation status in heaven and i need to tell you folks the reality is the american church is probably a lot closer to being a laodicean church than it is to being a philadelphian church having said that and i'm saying that to sober to sober everybody up myself included remember that brother grabbed me by the arm and he said brother this this is a war unto the shedding of blood we have a great and precious promise in the Word of God. The, 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 John tells us in his first epistle, he says, You are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. In the context of that f- fabulous scripture that all of us know, greater is he that is in you than he is in the world. We hear, it, we hear, that, we hear that quoted all the time. But in the context where this passage comes from, John says, You have overcome them, The them that John is referring to in the context are evil spirits, are lying spirits, is the spirit of this world. It's it's false prophets. Go back and read it in 1 John 4. The them that we overcome is is the truth, the spirit of Antichrist that overcomes the world. It's the truth that resides in us, that overcomes the lies and the God of this world. Let me tell you, Let me tell you, what greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world? Let me tell you what it doesn't mean. It doesn't mean you'll never suffer. 
It doesn't mean you'll never have any pain. It doesn't mean that you may never have to face the possibility of dying for your faith. What it means, greater is he that is in me. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. What it means is that come hell or high water, come what may, that if you endure to the end, not loving your life even unto death, that you will gain the victor's crown in the end because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And this is that which overcomes the world, even our faith. And even when the God of this world, when Satan turns his wrath against us, we will overcome him by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony, not loving our life even unto the death. And I just, with all my heart, I want you to hear my heart because I am, con- I am sincerely concerned because I'm seeing it more and more and more. I am sincerely concerned. And I believe that many in the American Evangelical Church in the American Pentecostal Charismatic Church, I believe many are going to truly, truly have their faith shaken when they begin to see that what's going on around them is not lining up with how they thought or how they were led to believe things were going to play out. But we do have great and precious promises. And we can say, We have overcome this world because of the blood of the Lamb. I'm so thankful for that blood. Thank you for the blood that you shed. Here's Matt Redman. I'll be right back. Standing in its blessing, we sing these freedom songs. The fusion of heart, mind, and soul. This is Open Up the Doors with Andy White here on Faith FM. WEGB 90.7 and 93.3 in that peak. WEGQ 91.7 in Quag. I want to thank everybody all around the Fruited Plain and all around the Spherical Globe for tuning in and joining in with me on this week's edition of Open Up the Doors. Hey, if you've never subscribed to my YouTube channel, I would ask that you would please subscribe to the YouTube channel. Just go on over to YouTube, do a search, or Google, just do a regular search. Andy White, open up the doors, and hit that little subscription button. And right next to the subscription button, there's a little bell that will notify you when uh, we upload something to YouTube. All of these broadcasts are archived. They're edited down uh, and loaded up onto YouTube. They ha- we, edit them th- we edit them down for time for a couple of reasons. One, because, you know, Time-wise, people will watch a shorter video than, a, than an hour-long video. And also, we've got, to, we've got to extract the music off the videos on YouTube because of uh, copyright laws and things like that. Even though this is an FM radio station, um, those disclaimers don't work with algorithms that are just searching around for co- copywritten music. They don't understand that, of course, we are licensed and, of course, we're playing music le- legally. At any rate... Um, the YouTube channel is meant to be a, a place of resource for the body of Christ. All of these teachings, all of these broadcasts, all of my sermons, plus other things as well, are on that uh, YouTube channel. So please use it as a resource and subscribe to it. And also, once again, follow me on Parler at AJ White 777 uh, Twitter and Facebook are becoming more and more and more uh, fascistic in their censoring. And the freedom over it in Parler is uh, exhilarating, to say the least. You can follow me at Parler at AJ White 777 Okay, so let me look at the clock. I've got about 10 minutes left of the broadcast, and I've got so many things in my heart that I want to share. You know, about four years ago, let me say this real quickly. About four years ago, when President Trump was first running for office, there were a lot of uh, different analogies being made from the body of Christ, uh, trying to, you know, compare him to people in the Bible, for instance, like Cyrus. Um, 
and Isaiah 45, and since, and since President Trump is the 45th president, there was a lot of comparisons being made uh, to President Trump being a modern-day type of Cyrus. Uh, I'm not going to get into the val- validity of, of, of all of that. I'm just, I'm just going rehashing the history of it. Besides the figure of Cyrus in the Bible, there was a lot of people also calling President Trump a modern-day Jehu. Now, that's one that uh, definitely um, always intrigued me because part of the story of Jehu, they would leave out. See, the, if, if you go back and read in, in, in the Bible history of Jehu, Jehu uh, slew Jezebel, Jehu slew the, uh, the dynasty of Ahab, and because Trump had, had obviously beaten Hillary and was going to drain the swamp, uh, he was being compared to Jehu. However, I said four years ago that that's not the whole story. And when you hear the rest of the story, as Paul Harvey would used to say, now for the rest of the story, when you read the story of Jehu, here's where it gets really interesting, if you want to go with that analogy. In the days of Jehu, after he slew uh, the household of Ahab, c- civil war broke out. There was civil war in Israel, and the Bible says that God began to to uh, to separate and bring division into the land of Israel. There was civil war going on. And because of the civil war, Israel, uh, had be, uh, the northern kingdom, by the way, had become weakened. And under the days of Jehu, here are two things that happened that are very important to this analogy, if you will. Civil war broke out. The nation began to splinter apart, and it was invaded by the Syrians. A, 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 you know, a, a foreign invader came and invaded Israel conquered Israel and led away uh, the northern kingdom, the ten tribes, into the Assyrian Empire. And for all of the comparisons that were being made to Trump back then, four years ago, that part was always left out. And I've been I've been reminding people of the whole story now for these past four years. Now, if you haven't noticed, folks, the comparisons there are rather alarming, to say the least. We're on the verge of a civil war. Our nation is incredibly divided, and I believe our, our foreign enemies are waiting to see and to attack us in a weakened state. I'm just laying that out there. And I'm saying that to say this. Once again, there's this verse in Second Kings chapter 19. It's been in my spirit for really months now it really has i think it's a very poignant poignant passage of scripture i believe it's for today i believe it's for now in second kings chapter 19 hezekiah sent to the prophet isaiah this was before the days of jehu by the way but it was all leading up to what would come in the future in, in their future sennacherib the Assyrian king, came down to invade Judah. King Hezekiah sent to Isaiah, pleading pleading with Isaiah, asking Isaiah for direction. And this is what King Hezekiah said to Isaiah. Listen to this. He said, this is a day of trouble and rebuke and blasphemy. Therefore, lift up your prayer for the remnant that is left. Now, I left out a, a couple of a couple of uh, sentences in between those, but that's how it's that's how that passage is 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 sandwiched together. There were some other incidentals in there, but this is a day of trouble, and rebuke, and blasphemy. Our nation's in trouble. Our nation is being rebuked in many ways by the Spirit of God. There is blasphemy going out across our nation. And Hezekiah said to the prophet and to the people of Israel, to the people of Judah, lift up your prayer for the remnant that is left. The remnant, the few. Have you ever noticed how God always does more with less? He whittles Gideon's army down from 30,000 to 300. Jonathan tells his armor bearer, 
come up, we're going to go up, and we're going to attack the Philistines, just the two of us. For God is able to give us the victory, for nothing restrains the Lord from saving by many or by few. Folks, here's where where I'm going with all of this. It's not about me. It's not about the we. It's about he. Greater is he that is in us. This is the way he proves that greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Jesus said, I say to you, my friends, do not be afraid of those who kill the body and after that have no more that they can do. But I will show you whom to fear. Fear him who after he has killed has power to cast into hell. Yes, I say to you, fear him. You see, because if you fear God, you will fear no man. If God be for me, who can be against me? If you walk in his ways and keep his commandments to do them, the Bible tells us, if you walk in my ways, if you keep my commandments and my statutes to do them, you will chase your enemies and they shall fall by the sword before you. Five of you shall chase a hundred and a hundred of you shall put 10,000 to flight. We have many great and precious promises that we can walk in as a front line deterrent to fear. There's so much fear in the world today. So many people didn't come up to the, to the rally in Albany because of fear. But greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. And God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of sound mind. It's not to say there aren't times when pain won't be inflicted, as I shared a moment ago. And there'll be times that we're persecuted and suffer. But we have God's precious promises. Read through Hebrews 11. There are two groups of people in Hebrews 11. And I'm running out of time, so I really can't go through it. But one group of people in Hebrews 11, uh, verse 32, it talks about Gideon and Barak and Samson and Jephthah and David and Samuel, who through faith subdued kingdoms and worked righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword. The point is, is there was this whole group of people that found deliverance, that found miraculous deliverance. This whole group of people whose faith had overcome the world, whose faith had overcome their fears. And we, we want to we want to we lift them up and we say we look to them. But there's this whole other group of people that the writer goes to. He says that others, others were tortured, not accepting deliverance, that they might obtain a better resurrection. Others, the same people of faith, the same whole of faith, others had trials of mockings and scourgings, yes, of chains and imprisonment. They were stoned. They were sawn in two. They were tempted with slain, and they were slain with the sword. It doesn't matter. The ultimate victory is to be found in him, brothers and sisters. Those who endure to the end will be saved. And we're not to fear those who can only kill the body. Because whether we live or whether we die, we belong to the Lord. This is that which has overcome the world, our faith. If the last six or seven months have shown me anything, it has shown me how pathetically weak the American church really is. It has shown me how fearful and compliant many professing Christians are to the present zeitgeist. But it has also shown me that there is a remnant, a remnant that is being made stronger as it remains faithful to the Lord, a remnant that is being purified and made more separate in holiness, a remnant that's becoming more discerning of the times and standing up with boldness and courage. Therefore, like Hezekiah said to Isaiah, pray for the remnant. And I want to exhort you in my last 30 seconds, seek out the remnant. Be part of the remnant. Flee from the Babylonian Laodicean church. Because I really think, brothers and sisters, that no matter who wins this election, there's going to be persecution coming, period. For this is a day of trouble and of rebuke and of blasphemy. Therefore, pray for the remnant that is left and never forget the Lord's promise 
be faithful unto death, and I will give you the victor's crown of life. In the meantime, watch, stand fast in the faith, be brave, be strong, and let all that you do be done in love. God bless everybody. Oh,